And we're back with more Devil May Cry 1 on the, well, on my version of the Nintendo Switch. And off screen, I decided to actually uh, redo missions 1 through 3 so I could get a better ranking. And just more red yeah, orbs in get... general. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because that is honestly the most helpful thing that I can get at this point. For more purple orbs, blue orbs, abilities, and... Not really items, because the funny thing about those is that in the second half of this game, we're going to find a lot of them. So it's not really worth it to buy so all he, of them. Right. Which is the mistake I kind of made. But also, he's speeding. He went back because he sucked the first time around. Yeah, at the same time, I was also extremely out of practice and just super rusty with the game in general. So it's like, might as well to make the rest of it easier in the long run. Mm -hmm. So, of course, it's not really going to be showing too much here because this is the second secret mission of the game where essentially you just got to kill a hundred of these tiny baby spiders. And that's really all there is to it. Just spam the gun. Spam gun. That's it. Also, I, I think I'll get agreement here from a majority of people that the hardest part of a DMC game is always the beginning. Yes. Because you don't have anything, you don't have any tools, you don't have any health, and you're still thrown into an ass load of difficult encounters. Yeah, and in Devil May Cry 1's case specifically, it's honestly the worst out of all of them, because DMC yeah. 1 throws the hardest variants of the default enemy at you, and it throws like 10 of them at you at once. Right. Which is supposed to not be that bad because of the fact that, hey, you have all your abilities and weapons and items from your first playthrough of the game, but since I have beaten the game in hard mode, it gives me the option to play the game fresh in hard mode, which means no weapons and items are carried over from the previous playthrough. Right. And You're also rematch with uh, Phantom Spider. Right. Phantom. Totally not a stalker. <laughs> yeah. Totally not a potentially cool Resident Evil villain. Yeah, honestly. And also, now that we're done be dealing with him, it's time for the second secret mission of this part! Yay! <laughs> There's gonna be three of these in this one mission. <laughs> of course, this is also the only other time that we're gonna be dealing with the little lava, lava spiders here. In this one in particular, you can't use any weapons, so you gotta stomp on all of them. <laughs> Yay! And I managed to do it first try, wow. Actually, I wow. think... Uh, you know, honestly, maybe, I say maybe, that, but at the maybe. same time, I managed to do it reliably on my practice runs, and I'm going to take a wild yeah. guess that part of it is, ironically, this table right here. Yeah. Because this is a destructible yeah. object, and it never respawns. Mm. And also, and here's another blue ore fragment. <laughs> I didn't think about that. Because I, I always break the table. Hmm. Wait, wait a second. I, I just, I just noticed something. I just noticed something. That texture in the top right is glitching. Ooh, that is weird. I just noticed that. In all my times of playing this game, I never noticed that texture glitch. That's two textures overwrapping each other, <laughs> right, right there on the top right. Wow. I never I noticed that. Fuck up. <laughs> oh, uh, maybe, maybe Yule was your bad luck charm. Also, speaking of. Yeah, unfortunately for this session, we're not going to have Yule around, so... Oh, 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 okay, he's doing that attack, okay. Hello. I'm going to get you, I'm going to get you. That, that, that move is even useless in Devil May Cry 5. Yeah, it really is, in all honesty. <laughs> Which is funny. But yeah, just going to quickly take care of the shadow and hope that I can actually get enough red orbs for another ability that I really want at this point, Air Hike, which, long story short, it's a double jump. That's really all that it is, and that's all that needs to be said. It's a double yeah. jump. Why wouldn't you want a double jump? It kind of sucks, because I, I don't like the idea of having to buy a double jump, but it makes sense, I guess. Yeah. And it's also a little bit unfortunate that I'm not getting to show off all of the attacks that the shadows have but at the same time i'd rather not get hit by the shadows attacks because they do so much damage and it's only made worse in hard mode yeah i mean these things there's an attack yeah, where he grabs you nice 
He, there's an attack where he grabs you and starts flailing you back and forth, and that, even on normal, that nearly kills. Yeah, actually, interesting trivia about that attack in particular, you may be wondering why I'm going to this section of the screen, is because... Actually, no, wait a second, that's not it. It's, uh... I think it's this one. Yeah. Yeah, it's this one. Screenshot. This is actually a quote-unquote fatality screen that you can get from that attack in particular. And this is an interesting thing about DMC1 that I'm pretty sure is a leftover from when it was from a Resident Street. Evil 4 prototype. That's interesting. Wow, I've never seen that because I've never... I don't think that move has ever killed me. It always put me on death and then he just killed me. Yeah, and that one, I think it's also just because it is the version of it where the fa the shadow itself is on death's door as well, so it's essentially suicide bombing you. Oh yeah, yeah. also, uh, since I'm going back to this room early, we get to see another enemy, the uh, Beelzebubs. They're essentially giant flies. AK annoying Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that when you killed them, they had maggots coming out from the I hill. accidentally bought round trip. <laughs> But that's fine. <laughs> I'll just go ahead and grab a bunch of other upgrades anyway, so it doesn't really matter too much. Did you notice that, though? Yeah, they actually... The maggots that they spit out will actually uh, clog up the ammo on your gun. Which, what? the way I'd like to headcanon it is that they fire maggots, and the maggots themselves actually clog up the barrel of, like, the, you're firing yeah. maggots instead of the... <laughs> yeah, it makes sense. Instead of the actual bullets, but yeah, it, it does make Bro. sense that way. It's just the description of it in the actual uh, enemy file itself. Let me see. Yeah. The green beals above eat the dead when it's hit on its back. This is when it's most vulnerable. Okay, no, I didn't get that. I didn't get that enemy uh, excerpt from just that encounter. Well... Um, I have a complete file with it, though, so we can check it, check that later on. Okay. There's an immense power that will not allow anyone to get closer. Oh, yeah, that's right. We got a, okay. the Pride of Lion calm, earlier. Calm down. <laughs> All right, okay, okay. You're kind of getting a little too hype. <laughs> yes. But that's fair. Before it I is one of your favorite Lion, games. I need a sign. Shall I use the Pride of Lion? Yeah, I mean, what else would you use? What I was going to say was, before Legon went on a 5 million thousand rant tangent, um... Was that that feels like another leftover from when it was Resident Evil 4? That mechanic. What? Wow. Oh, yeah, and since this is hard mode, this is another enemy that we're getting to see early. This is the Death Scissor. Not too early though. Thinking about the context, he he, he shows up a few missions from now in normal mode, but it's not that far out. Yeah, I think the mission that he shows up in is mission six, which mm. this is mission four. Mm. Just to put that in context. I even feel like he shows up a little early in the main game, <laughs> or the normal game. So, very fun. Yeah, he kind of does. Well, this is a pain in the ass. He's like one of the most he annoying really enemies is. in the game. It's especially for me because of that vortex attack. Yeah. Out of everything well, that he does. It's annoying that he just fucking goes up in the air and is like, Haha, you can't fucking fuck me. There we go, he's dead. Okay, good. And now that we've beaten him, we're actually going to not go through the door that says progress, we are going to backtrack a little bit more because there is another secret mission that we have yet to do. So that normal encounter, that encounter in normal is just, I think it's a few shadows. Yeah, it's, it's, like it's just shadows. one shadow, actually. It's one of these things right here. Oh, no, it's, it's, it's also notable because it's, it's the shadow that gets a cheap shot off on you if you're not careful. Yeah. Which is kind of sad because on hard mode, that cutscene is actually taken out of the game. Because it's a death server. Also, another but one of I these think, spawns, uh, so I might as well just grab the red orbs. <laughs> yeah, um. So, what was I gonna say? Oh, fuck. Legon, calm down, you're throwing me off. <laughs> um, no, uh. Shit, what was I gonna say? No, oh, it's kind of annoying, it's kind of uh, sad because, like, on hard mode, 
that uh, there's multiple cutscenes in the game where you get or there's like a few. There's a few in the game where you can get hit uh, through a cheap shot. I think there's like two. There's like a boss that can do it, and then there's that shadow that can do it. And there's two cutscenes I'm pretty sure where you can get cheap shotted through the cutscene if you don't dodge immediately after it ends, and it's supposed to be like a noob trap, which is kind of annoying. Also, now that I have the shotgun, I'm just going to use it on the marionettes for catharsis. Yeah. Appropriate. Am I right about that, though? Or is that the only time you get cheap shot at this? Uh, no, guy? there are actually a few more instances of it, but it is... It's peppered throughout the game, just in general. Yeah. It's not that frequent. I think, I think one of the bosses coming up does it during one of his encounters. Yeah, they actually kind of do in some ways, just to jump the gun yeah. a little bit. We are, you know, since, you know, again, action game, there's going to be a lot of bosses. Jump, jump the gun, and look, jump and gun. Aha! Sorry, I'll go jump off a cliff now. Don't forget the gun. <laughs> <laughs> I'll throw it under me as I jump. <laughs> You're like, ha look at that, I'm jumping the gun. At the very least, this does yield a lot of red orbs, so I can get even closer to getting air hike actually this time instead of almost every other upgrade that a laster has. Yeah, and not buying another upgrade by accident so that you fuck yourself out of air hike. Yeah. At that point, I was just kind of like, eh, might as well <laughs> with the other ones. Yeah. And now I mean, we are going already. to start a secret mission that many consider to be one of the worst in the game, particularly because particularly because of one specific gimmick it has. Secret Mission 4, The Three Beasts, Fight the Shadow. You only have one chance. You have to fight three of these things at once, and you only have one chance at it without resetting the save file. Yep. I Basically almost pulled resetting. the thing I did on stream again. <laughs> what, what, where you just fucking wrecked it in the opening room without seeing it? Yeah, that was... Um... Yeah, that was Un honestly ridiculous. I couldn't, I couldn't believe that. <laughs> I was just so fucking surprised that you did that. Meanwhile, I'm going to play Jump Force because I got it on sale, and why not? Ah, okay. This is really the most, the most painful part of the secret mission in particular, is just the manual lock-on system and how unreliable it is in DMC1 in particular. Because you cannot yeah, change you which target you're locked onto. I got one now. Now let's not recreate that clip that I had that I showed off earlier with the fatality screen, please. Did you did you do that on purpose or was that like an act like something you caught that? It was an accident. You... And yeah, there it is. Again. There it is. Well you didn't get it, but yeah, time you to didn't restart. get the screen, but Because like Cut. I said, you only have one shot at that secret mission. Otherwise, you're screwed, and you have to reset the save anyway. <laughs> you're supposed to cut. Well, okay, not it's not that aggressive. I'm not trying to be rude, but it's like, Jesus, man, calm down a little bit. My hype levels are way too high. <laughs> That's probably fair, actually. Now that I think about it, so I might as well just not even say anything. <laughs> I think like what it's 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 cool. I love this game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I didn't think. I just, I'm surprised. I, I I've just never seen someone so in, like passionate about DMC one. Yeah, I mean, I I've been thinking about it a little bit more, and I thought back to like the comment you said in the first session, where it's like this is what you consider to be the last good Resident Evil game, and the more that I'm thinking about it, it's just like that. It really is. Is really accurate. It really is the last good Resident Evil game. <laughs> Which is before, especially before. crazy okay, me, because of me. how it has the swords and guns and all that. Yeah. yeah. Well, let me also clarify. It's the last good classic Resident Evil game. I think I even said that in the first session. I was like, it's the last good classic Resident Evil game. Because it is essentially a classic Resident Evil game. And it's not... I mean, it's Devil May Cry in name, and it does have some differences in feel. But it's yeah. like... I, I don't... I think a lot of people misrepresent just how much of this game really is still Resident Evil evil at its core what i was saying was uh i'll say it in the lp2 where it's like i think even even the story progression is very resident evil compared to the other dmc game dante extermination service 
All the bugs are gone, but just don't don't mind all the bullet holes in the floor. All the bugs are gone, but so is your furniture. <laughs> it gave me red orbs. That's why Dante never gets paid. Also, now I actually finally have air hike. Editing me is just going to put a bunch of random excerpts of what's being said here in the final product, so don't worry about it. And now they're all dead. Time to try killing the shadows again. We're back. <laughs> kind of. We're back. <laughs> Let's see Legon not fail at this. Please. Knowing our, knowing his luck, he will not. I didn't manage to cheese it. I cheese that one though. <laughs> I'm gonna run away. Run, run away! That one's done. Ooh! Ah oh, man, they both did it at once, and I landed on the wrong one. Nice. Okay. You better not kill me. Thank you, Airhead, for saving me. Th that's the annoying thing about this mission in particular that makes me fucking hate it is that you can be doing the weak point and the other one will just still be coming at you. Yeah, and it, the fixed camera angles are the worst part of this, too. It's just... blech. And also, uh, another thing that I might as well just go ahead and say right now, a strategy that I use sometimes when I'm feeling bored is that I will actually, when they're on their desperation attack and I'm at full health, I'll let them grab me so that they can do that final attack because they always give me a health drop after they die anyway, so it's like it's not yeah. really going to be too big of a problem, especially when it's the last one left. They always give you a health drop at the end of it? Yeah. I didn't know if that, I didn't feel like that was guaranteed because there was times where I would get one in normal mode and then in other times it wouldn't give me one? I don't know. Maybe, uh, maybe I'm misremembering. Starting to get a little choppy on my end. Uh, all right, it's fixed for the most part. Nothing really to worry about though, because just now we're going back to where we were before, or I mean, back to progress, I should say. And now we have another divinity statue over there. Never mind. I don't need to worry about that. And also, actually, since we're here, I'm gonna. No, you know what? No, never mind. I'm not gonna. I'm not going to try showing that off yet. I'm going to save that for later. Right. Because I have a feeling you know exactly what I'm getting at in terms of what I'm talking about. Yeah. And it's good. Oh, yeah, speaking of it good... Uh, hilarious, especially because of how it abuses the jank. Yeah. I, I do like the... I do like the abil ability... Uh, excuse me, my broken English. Uh, I like the ability to abuse the jank. Also, I like in this game... Another game does it. But your DT actually affects the gun. It makes your bullets lightning bullets. Yeah, and the funny thing about it is that when you uh, hit an enemy with your gun in DT, it always oh. raises style points. Yeah. Well, also, it just, like, affects the effect of it. Actually, it affects elemental weaknesses, too, as we'll see later on, but we'll get to that when we get to that. Yeah. Come on, die, 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 die. I want to move on. I want to move on. Da, 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 da. Why do these things keep spawning? Just come on. I want to move on. Hang on. Give me just a moment. Uh, family interruption, essentially. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right, we're back. Sorry, uh, unintended interruptions. It'll be cut out. <laughs> Isn't that right, editing me? Oh, hello, another shadow. <laughs> I was wondering where you went. <laughs> Why do I keep running into these well, things? There it is. Wow, actually, the <laughs> so it's just a normal encounter in the in this in this version of the game. In and hard he still mode, does... it's a normal encounter. Yeah. Yeah, and he still does the thing without the cutscene. 
he'll, he'll still that's basically what he does but instead of uh it being normal like that it's a cutscene and then he still fucking hits you yeah which is bullshit fucking bullshit and also i feel Sorry, like cat interrupting this no okay it didn't bug out this time and it actually spawned the second one in correctly <laughs> Because oh, okay. I've had multiple occasions of this where the second one will spawn in, clip through the four, and then immediately die. <laughs> <laughs> multiple I mean, that's times, helpful, by the way. <laughs> that's kind of helpful, actually. Yeah, it's helpful, but at the same time, it's also just kind of funny because you can tell it wasn't intentional. Yeah. I think most of it is just where it spawns, though, if I'm being entirely honest. Right. I mean, it makes sense, though. This game was kind you of <laughs> like a classic Resident Evil game. It's not the best program. Yeah. Alright, and... Yeah, this just makes it so fun. Stairs. Greatest way to deal with enemies. Because, <laughs> yeah, that's totally not a Resident Evil staple of dealing with enemies on stairs. Well, I mean... Modern Resident Evil stereo or trope now. There's something written. The sword is the key to freeing the soul. The key resides at the highest place. Hmm. Where is this highest place? It couldn't be right over here. <laughs> yeah, it couldn't be literally just five <laughs> feet away. It's a statue of a female with a melancholic expression. There's an opening to place something. Shall I use the death sentence? Wow, which what, you can't use as a weapon. What? Which is sad, because the thing looks so fucking rad. I know. Look at it, that. Yeah, it looks so cool. And it has a cool name. Yeah. And then there's also... The funny thing about this is, like, this room in general is the biggest RE4, like, leftover, I feel. Because of stuff like this. This item has its own description and stuff like that. And just, like, other stuff in the room that I'll talk about once we get through this cutscene. Because the last year's lightning senses are tingling again. God damn it, stop getting a lightning boner. It's time for a mirror match. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> if, if only, right? Yeah. The funny, th a little bit of funny trivia about this scene, again, I'm going to have a lot of trivia points for this game because I've played it so many times, is that this is actually not even a mirrored model. They literally just copy-pasted the model and swapped the direction that the sword is placed. Because I've played this with the Smarta costume. The way I noticed it is that he has a monocle over the right eye. The monocle is oh. over the right eye in the mirror, too. What? That's, wow, <laughs> that is interesting. Which, you know, it's supposed to... Actually, if you think about it, it's an interesting allusion to what this character is. But yeah. we'll save it for later, I guess. Yeah. Even though because... I, everyone already kind of knows what it is, it's still, you know. Yeah. This... The name of this name of that guy is Nello Angelo, which, funnily enough, is not even supposed to be his actual name. Nello Angelo is a mistranslation. It's Nero Angelo, right? Yeah, it's Nero Angelo because of how the Japanese dialect works in translation. It got a little lost for this character's name in particular. I'm gonna get sticking level two. Uh, he was originally supposed to be Nero Angelo, but because of the Japanese dialect, the L and R, the sounds the L and R letters make are pretty much the same in the Japanese dialect compared to English where they sound distinct and different and that's probably why it got like that which is neat and like I was gonna say before this room just in general this room is a Resident Evil throwback because everything here in it is interactable this bed this must have been where the Castellan slept I did not mean to jump on top of the bed <laughs> there's a portrait of the Castellan and his spouse placed above the fireplace cute There are documents here that were probably used for diplomacy with the neighboring countries. This one thing here, though, I find the most interesting out of everything, because I remember you bringing up that window in the first part. There's a note left by a Castellan. Often I feel that the time passes awkwardly around here. In some places, the flowers never die. In other places, they wither ever so quickly. I cannot stay here yeah. very long, for I know my sanity will leave me. <laughs> Which is probably something to do with, like, the visual of that, of window, that window way back. Yeah, the window way back in the first part. Also, Nello Angelo is supposed to be up here. He's not. <laughs> right. Nice. 
And since we're up here, I'm going to get another blue orb early. Or blue orb fragment. And that's another blue orb. You're not... You're sh honestly not supposed to get up here until later, but I have air hike, so it doesn't really matter. Anyway, it's time for the boss fight. <laughs> it's also... If his name really was Nero Angelo, it would also make us another character's name a little more interesting later on. But, oh well. Translation error. Yeah. Also, you can see an immediate difference in how much damage is done as soon as I turn on DT. Like, just look at how quickly his ult goes down. And I'm also doing a technique that is only applicable in DMC1 called Slash Cancelling. Which, I would explain what it is, but I kind of got to kill the boss first. So I'm going to yeah. do that, and then I'll explain what it is. Because it has something to do with how DMC1, in particular, handles the uh, combat coding. Yeah. But this is interesting, because Itsuno was a Street Fighter developer, and he brought fighting game concepts to an action game which is interesting but it was already there was already a basis for it here with slash with cancels yeah there's actually multiple cancels in dmc1 in particular just because of how uh, archaic the system itself is designed there is taunt canceling there is jump canceling and there's also slash canceling just to name the ones off the top of my head and even though i absolutely annihilated nello angel in the boss fight he uh, owns dante here anyway <laughs> I love that I kicked your fucking ass in gameplay dissonance. <laughs> yeah, gameplay dissonance. But because Which Dante something... has an amulet, Nello Angelo freaks out and goes away. <laughs> it's too pretty for my taste. <laughs> the budget doesn't allow for It's too shiny. I only enjoy goth things. Look at my dark armor. How did I get an S rank? Because you fucking kicked <laughs> Nero Angel's ass. <laughs> you know, fair enough. <laughs>